welcome. Welcome to track three, stage three. Um, we have a fantastic talk. We do want to uh, thank our sponsors again, INE Learning, um, uh, Exonius, uh, MongoDB, Juniper Networks, Corelight, Google, um, We Hack Purple, and of course, Bridge Crew. We couldn't be doing this without the sponsors. We thank you so much. Um, I want to welcome to the stage uh, Cheru Bansal. Um, she is currently working as Information Systems Security Officer for an anti financial crime technology business, very different from a financial crime technology business. Um, she leads the product information security and compliance program and does so much for the business. She's currently based in Amsterdam, has worked and lived all over the world, Asia, Americas, UK, Europe, and tons and tons of work experience. I'm really excited to hear the talk on navigating the imposter syndrome. Why? Because I'm kind of feeling it today. So <laughs> please welcome to the stage, Charu. Thank you so much, Kat. And hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining from all over the world. My name is Charu, and I'm really excited to talk to you about the imposter syndrome, a topic that's really close to my heart. And thank you, Diana Initiative, for making it possible, and all the sponsors for creating this opportunity for me here today. So I was told security people love cat pictures. So I figured since this is my first talk at a security conference, I should start with a cat picture and make a good impression. So let me start with a little scenario that I've experienced as a woman in security. So you walk into a meeting, there's a bunch of guys who already seem to know each other, they're making personal jokes that you don't understand, and then the meeting starts, you start taking notes, and then they start throwing out acronyms and jargon. And as the meeting progresses, your mental chatter kicks in, and then you start feeling smaller and smaller, and then you feel like, oh, maybe they're so smart. What am I doing here? Does anyone relate to this feeling? And if you do, post your favorite emoji in the chat. Right, I'm sure there's a lot of us. <laughs> okay, well, congratulations, you are in the right talk. So let me start a little bit with telling you about myself. So my name is Charu Bansal. I grew up in a small town in rural Himalayas and I had very little access to technology as I grew up with no real role models. I studied liberal arts, mostly because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I got a job. And then seven years ago, somebody took a chance on me in their security team. And that was my pivot into security. And I finally found something that I loved, enjoy, loved doing. And now, after many years of hard work and overcoming a lot of imposter syndrome feelings, I work as an information security officer for a global enterprise. And I'm grateful to a lot of people who believed in me along these through this journey and supported me. And some of them are actually in the audience today. So my first year in security was actually really fun. I learned that a penetration test was actually a security assessment. And then there was always a man in the middle. And burp suite was not what it sounded like. Thank God, <laughs> who came up with all of this? And it all became clear when I went to my first security conference. I was one of five women at a 200 person event. It was great that I didn't have to queue for the bathroom, but surely there was a problem. It was no surprise that I struggled to fit in. I constantly grappled with the question, what value can I bring to security? Maybe I should go back to university. Or maybe I've joined the party too late. Everyone's so smart. So that was what was going on in my head all the time. And then I had a realization. I thought I was brave for doing this. Not only was I challenging my own insecurities, but I was also challenging an established bias against women in technology. So we are up against a lot and it's bound to be hard. 
So I gave myself a pat on my back and, and I tell myself every time I struggle that, hey, you're brave for doing this. So one of the best lessons I want to share with you today is that knowledge is not equal to intelligence. So just because you haven't heard of a certain acronym or you haven't come across a certain technology does not mean that you cannot learn it. Knowledge and intelligence are two different things. You are intelligent and you can learn anything that you're willing to put the effort in. The key is putting in that continuous effort to learn and grow. There are multiple resources that are available and that can be leveraged. Some of the best security professionals I know are self-taught and they continue to learn. So challenge yourself to learn something new every day. Listen to security podcasts, subscribe to newsletters, go to your local security community events, attend conferences and webinars. Don't let others define your boundaries. So this was kind of um, interesting that I experienced. People would tell me, oh, maybe you can just take notes or maybe you'll not be able to lead that meeting with the engineers. Or they would say, you are so great at organizing things. Maybe you can take care of all our conference pages and we can do all the tech details. People love putting you in boxes because they believe they know you. And sometimes they actually believe they're helping you. But if you don't challenge that narrative, that box becomes your reality. So challenge people when they say, when they put you in a box and surprise them by making your own path and then doing a kick-ass job. Threat modeling, as we know, is a collaborative exercise when teams come together to identify and proactively mitigate potential threats to a system, process, or application. Having a diverse team in that perspective is immensely valuable to this process. So every time I moved continents, I would make a list of all the things that could possibly go wrong. And then I would find ways to proactively fix it. I just didn't know it was threat modeling. So my knowledge of various payment methods and potential threat vectors was actually really invaluable when we were building a threat model for a global payment platform at work. I knew global law, laws and regulations really well, which was helpful in incident response planning. And I understood how people in different cultures behave and react, which helped me design creative phishing exercises. I also had great analytical skills. Security is an understanding of human behavior and not all security problems have technical solutions, nor does security only have technical problems. So find the unique skills that you have built from your life experiences that will broaden the perspective of your team. Don't limit yourself by what you, what's already out there, but create your own threat model and bring your own value. You will amaze yourself. And some days it's going to be hard and you will struggle. And when that happens, ask for help. It can be a colleague that you trust or somebody that you met at a conference. And this is something I didn't do early on because I was afraid. And that is characteristic of the imposter syndrome because you don't want people to find out that you're struggling. Only when I realized that everyone around me was actually also doing the same thing. <clears throat> so as a security community, I think we need to normalize asking for help when we are struggling. And it can start with you. So don't brush your struggles under the carpet. We've all been there and we can help each other out. So now you may think, okay, I can challenge my deal with my own mental chatter, but what about others? Has anybody ever experienced rolling of eyes or frustration or impatience when you've asked a question? So post an emoji in the chat if you've experienced that. <laughs> Love it. Well, that's bound to happen. And when that happens, be prepared, show up and be present. Ask for an agenda. Chances are there is no agenda. That's happened with me a lot of times. And if, but you be that person who asks for it. And if there is anything unfamiliar in the agenda, prepare. 
study about it and show up to the meeting with already having a perspective. And then show up and show up again. Don't be deterred if somebody rolls their eyes at you or raises their eyebrows. And be present, listen intently. Sometimes you may only understand 10% of the discussion and that's okay. If you keep showing up and you keep engaging, things will start to connect. And the one thing I cannot stress enough is to find a mentor you can trust, a role model and someone who can guide you in your career aspirations. I've met some incredible people at conferences like the Day and Initiative who are always willing to help. Just as a recent example, when I first applied to the CFP at the Diana Initiative, it was not selected, but I was given the option to work with a mentor. And she really helped me, and it was an in incredible experience to help me think through my message, help me think through what I really wanted to convey, and I applied again, and here I am. So it's really amazing what a mentor can do for you. And I'm gonna pivot a little bit in my talk here, and I'm gonna to talk to the mentors in the audience today, people who are either mentoring others or planning to. Are there any mentors today? Right. Well, thank you for being a mentor. So over the last seven years of working in security, many people have offered support, and sometimes with the best of intentions. But the most helpful mentors have been those who have invested the time to dialogue, to ask questions and understand where I'm coming from. I know a lot, a lot of people have said to me, oh, if you need anything, just reach out. But the problem is sometimes we don't know what we need. And sometimes it's very difficult to ask for help. Mentoring in that sense is a process of dialogue to help understand what the person needs from us. It is a process of building trust and you need to help people have trust in you. So I have a funny story. <laughs> my, my partner also works in security and he's quite technical. So many years ago when we first started going out, um, he, we were at lunch and they were making some Linux jokes and I didn't get that. And I said, well, I think I really wanna learn Linux. And then my partner's like, sure, I'll help you out. And next thing I know, I got this book in the mail and I was looking at it like, okay, what I really needed was this. I had a liberal arts background, I had no clue. If only he had asked me what I know about Linux and I would have said nothing and then he would have known what to get me. A common tendency for mentors or supporters is also um, when they see someone struggling, they offer to do it for them. People will say, don't worry about the diagram, I'll do it for you, or bring me onto the meeting and I can take care of all the tech details. Don't, don't fix it for them, offer to teach it. It may take a little longer, but it will really help them. I remember a few years ago, I reached out to somebody on my team and asked if they could help me understand how a SQL injection worked. And I got a very enthusiastic email back with 10 YouTube links to conferences they had been to, links to Pluralsight and Cybrary courses, links to books on Amazon that I could buy. And then finally, there was their own research on GitHub. And I remember reading that email and feeling even worse than I did before, because I thought there's no way I can ever learn this. This is way too hard. <laughs> So it really goes back to our discussion on when dialogue, we really need to help people with very targeted resources. Is it the technology they don't understand or is it that they're not able to make connections? And once you know what they really need, just offer them only that resource. And be patient with your mentees. It may take time to understand. Sometimes it can be frustrating but it's a very rewarding process in the end. I've found that being a mentor to others is actually very helpful in dealing with your own imposter syndrome. It makes me think that if I can help somebody, maybe I know a thing or two. And finally, I told you there's gonna be more cat pictures. Um, 
there is a message for anyone who's looking to change careers into information security or anyone who feels insecure with their background. You can bring valuable and unique contributions to the world of security. So don't doubt yourself if you don't have a technical background or you are surrounded by seemingly smart people. Speaking at my first security conference brought up a ton of imposter syndrome feelings. But a huge shout out to the Diana Initiative and everybody who supported me through this process. And here I am today speaking to all of you. So how about one of you give it a try next year? Thank you so much for listening to me today. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'm available on Slack. Feel free to DM me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sheru. Um, that was awesome. And we actually have some time. So I'm looking in the chat um, if we have any questions that anybody might like to reach out right now. And I'm also going to post, here is the survey link. So please remember to go and fill out the speaker survey um, for Chiru. This is um, just an awesome thing. And we really wanna know how well uh, our speakers and all the talks were, were received by everyone. So please take a, a few moments to actually do that. And I'm looking, do we have any, any questions in there? There's one, do you wanna go ahead and take that? How do we support people who may be willing, who may not be willing? Yeah, I think uh, just the same thing, you have to dialogue and we have to help them trust us because it's hard. Like, I think I struggled with just owning up to it. And I think as a community, we can normalize that um, asking for help and asking, saying that, hey, we're struggling. I think a lot of times people just don't do that. But the more and more we do it, um, we can really help people open up and share that they are struggling. And uh, I think that just creates that whole environment where people can um, feel open to share whatever they feel. I, I'm going to go ahead and throw out a question myself. Um, I, I've been doing this for a, a very long time, more than 30 years. Um, and yet I still get imposter syndrome. I uh, just maybe a couple of weeks ago, I woke up and I went, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I, uh, and I, why is that? Why, no matter how long we've been doing something, why do we still get this? <laughs> That's why my talk was called Navigating the Imposter Syndrome and not Overcoming the Imposter Syndrome, because yes, that just continues. And uh, yeah, I still struggle with it. A lot of times I'm still in meetings and I'm just like, I don't know. And even this morning when I had to do this presentation, I was just having a serious struggle. Like, why will people want to listen to me? <laughs> and what do I have to offer? But that's, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's how it is. But we can all, I think, as a community, when we support each other and we see that everyone struggles with it, it's just not us. I think that's quite comforting. And, uh, and the more and more we do it, and the more and more we challenge ourselves, I think it becomes easier. It, is there a term for those times when you um, do something and you actually say to yourself, damn, I'm good at what I do? <laughs> because it's the total opposite of the imposter syndrome. <laughs> exactly. And that happens, right? A lot of times I, I was... Uh, when I started working in security, it was like, I started from like the basics and it was like not knowing anything. And now when I can just sit in a meeting, sometimes I'll throw out some acronyms and people will just look at me like, okay, she knows a thing or two. And, and I feel good about it. <laughs> and, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a process. And uh, unfortunately um, there will always be some people who will, um, roll their eyes or be frustrated, um, but you but you can, there's always also a great community of supporters out there. Awesome. Uh, let's see, any other questions? I... 
don't see. Oh, there we go. Oh, are there any clicks? Yeah, I think what I tell myself is what I shared my first slide was I am brave for doing this. That That's what I, every time there is a thought that comes in, I challenge it. How true is it? And then I say, hey, you're brave. It's not, you, you came from nothing and you are here doing this. A lot of people are not. So pat yourself with the back and be proud of what you're doing. And that usually helps me in the moment to challenge whatever is going on. It, it was actually very apropos in Alyssa's um, keynote this morning that she mentioned that the imposter syndrome talk was coming up and she had put up the tweet that she almost sent about being very, very, very negative. Um, and, you know, even someone like her having those feelings, mm -hmm. at least it, it justifies the fact that when we feel it, okay, uh, you know, we're allowed, I guess. <laughs> I see another question. Um, yeah, I think with compliments, it's it's hard sometimes, but you got to own it. And I think we should compliment each other more. Um, we don't do that enough, I think. And and uh, and today, just just hearing from all of you, just seeing that support, I feel great. And and we just need to help each other and and offer more and more compliments because we're all doing such an amazing job. Just being here and doing this um, this conference and and you know just doing everything that we do in our daily basis in our jobs, we should own it. <laughs> De definitely, I agree with you. I know that your talk today has just made me feel better. Um, I have to give a talk. I feel that you say that. <laughs> I have to give a talk this afternoon. So of course, even though I've I, I did, I've done talks before. I'm I'm going. Oh God, I'm going to screw up. But this was really good, and and just gave me a lot of things to think about. So thank you very much again. Um, I you said you'd be in Slack. So I think any anybody that has any other questions, um, yeah. If if you don't have the Slack link here, wait. Because some people are not in Slack. Well, where to go? There we go. Um, boom. Here it is. So make sure you are in the Diana Initiative Slack channel. Um, there it is. Uh, if it's, just in case anybody is missing from it. And what's going on over here? Do, do, do. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't have anything else unless we have any other questions. Um, thank you again. Great talk. And we'll stay tuned. I don't know what's coming up next. Um, something. <laughs> I can't tell which one. But yes, yeah, stay tuned for all the talks today and tomorrow. And we'll see you all around the Diana. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Kat. <laughs>